Greetings. My name is John Hancock, and I invite you to become a delegate to the Continental Congress to debate the reasons for declaring independence. Part role play, part debate. This new large scale educational event portrays the founding fathers in June and July of 1776 here at Independence Hall. This free event is designed by teachers for teachers who wish to use the latest in technology in the classroom. We hope this new approach redefines experiential education through virtual travel and changes the way you can experience history. Join us and make history by teaching history in the metaverse. Visit alexanderhamilton.live to learn more. And now we present the debate for independence in virtual reality. Good day, gentlemen. I, John Hancock, as president of the Continental Congress, do hereby call us into session. Gentlemen, in the last year, we have gone from resistance to rebellion and now to revolution. Parliament declared Massachusetts to be in a state of rebellion allowing soldiers to shoot patriots like Sam Adams and myself on sight, resulting in the battles of Lexington, Concord, and Boston. We have created a Continental Army and appointed General George Washington, Major General, uh, who vanquished General Howell and his army from Boston. Though reports now state that an armada that looks like all of London afloat is sailing to New York with the intention of dividing the colonies at the Hudson River. Over 10,000 German mercenaries are employed by the Crown to aid their army and navy. We have sent our declaration of the causes and necessity of taking up arms. Thank you, Mr. Jefferson and Mr. Dickinson for your work on that. And our olive branch petition. Again, thank you, Mr. Dickinson from Pennsylvania. We have sent them to the king, but he has refused to read them and declared the American colonies in rebellion, which authorizes the British government to use force against all of us. Parliament has passed the American Prohibitory Act, forfeiting American vessels and cargoes to the crown, as well as pressing captives into service in the Royal Navy. The Royal Governor of Virginia, Lord Dunmore, has freed all slaves wanting to fight for the crown and has subsequently burnt Norfolk, Virginia to the ground. Our plan to liberate Quebec was thwarted, but Thomas Paine's pamphlet on common sense is helping to convince others of our cause. We have armed our vessels with privateer privileges and opened our ports to trade with Europe. Uh, we have also adopted Mr. Adams' revolution to create independent governments and oaths of allegiance throughout the towns and the colonies of America. Yet still, only New Hampshire, Rhode Island, North Carolina, and Massachusetts have declared independence. The chair calls Mr. Lee. Sir, I have just returned from the newly declared independent state of Virginia with a resolution. I'll receive that re resol re uh, resolution. The Virginia Le legislature urges Congress to take the most effectual measures for, re for forming foreign alliances and to prepare a plan of confederation for the newly independent states. Independence is the only way to ensure foreign alliances since no European monarchs would negotiate with America if we remain British colonies. Resolved that these United States are, and of right ought to be, free and independent states, that they are dissolved from all allegiances to the British crown, and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is, and ought to be, totally dissolved. Mr. Adams. Massachusetts seconds. The proposal being seconded, the chair will enter entertain debate. Mr. Dickinson. Pennsylvania moves the debate for independence be postponed indefinitely. And Delaware seconds. 
The motion to postpone has been moved and seconded. All of those in favor of debating Virginia's resolution of independence say aye. All in favor of postponing the debate say nay. New Hampshire. <laughs> Massachusetts. Rhode Island. Connecticut. Yes. New York. Abstain. Pennsylvania. Nay. Delaware. Virginia. Yay. North Carolina? No. South Carolina? Nay. And Georgia? Also nay. Mr. Livingston? Oh, why have you abstained, Mr. Livingston? Sir, the New York delegation has not received the authorization from the Provincial Congress to vote for independence. At this time, I declare Congress to be in a committee of the whole for the purposes of debating the Virginia's revolution, uh, resolution. Gentlemen, you are now free to openly discuss without being recorded in the minutes. Uh, each delegate is free to express himself and your particular colony's grievances with the Crown. New Hampshire. To quote uh, Thomas Paine, we have it in our power to begin the world over again. The birthday of a new world is at hand. And uh, is there anything else from New Hampshire instead of from uh, directly from anything else? And Massachusetts. For protecting them, a mock trial from punishment for any murders which they should commit in the inhabitants of these states for depriving us in many cases of the benefit of trial by jury, for transporting us beyond seas to be tried for pretend offenses, for taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable laws and altering fundamentally the forms of our government. He has, a, he has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. New Jersey. Yes. And New Jersey, do you have any grievances about the king to relay to us? Yeah, we don't want to pay pay taxes. No <laughs> representation without what was it? No president, no resident. I don't know. And according to this, I'm going to read it. Yes, please. And we don't want to pay any taxes or uh, have any control outside. That's not in, in New Jersey. Connecticut. He has refused his assent to laws, the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance unless suspended in their op operation till his assent should be obtained. And when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend to them. New York. Uh, yes, for suspending our own legislatures and declaring themselves invested with power to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. The king has kept among us, in times of peace, standing armies without the consent of our legislatures. For quartering large bodies of armored troops among us, he has affected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. The king is at this time transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, desolation, and tyranny already begun with circumstances of cruelty and 
perfidy scarily paralleled in the most oh, yeah, barbarous yeah, of yeah, ages yeah. and totally unworthy of the head of a I civilized think. nation. <laughs> Rhode Island. Yeah. This is this is uh, too complicated. I I say yes to a revolution. But Rhode Island seems to, according to this, uh, Rhode Island, you, Rhode Island has plundered muted. plundered our seas, ravaged the coast, burnt towns, destroyed lives, and uh, has constrained fellow citizens taken captive. How does this read? I I don't understand it. It's too complicated. I, Rhode Island is a criminal, according to this. Actually, Rhode Island is reading the qualms that they have about the king. And yes, the king is a criminal. Okay, we agree with Rhode Island, Island in that matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well, okay, go for revolution then. <laughs> because the king is uh, plundered and ravaged and, and bear arms against and become an executioners of friends and brethren and. And, and then whatever. Somebody's been doing some wrong here. Absolutely. If it's the king, <laughs> it's the king we got to go to war. And then this one, we don't want to do any taxes without representation. And this one is, uh, we don't want to pay taxes or, or trade with anybody outside the world. We want to hoard our goodies, according to this. Yes. Keep yes. Got. Well said. Pennsylvania. He has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our constitution and unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation. For abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing therein an arbitrary government, and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into those colonies. Maryland and Delaware are at the privy. Virginia. He has excited domestic insurrections amongst us and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages, whose known rules of warfare is an undistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. North Carolina. He has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing his assent to laws for establishing judiciary powers. He has made judges dependent on his will alone for their tenor of their offices and the amount and payment of their salaries. South Carolina. He has endeavored to prevent the population of these states for that purpose obstructing the laws for naturalization of foreigners refusing to pass others to encourage their migrations hither and raising the condition of new appropriations of land. Georgia. He has refused to pass other laws for the accommodation of large districts of people, unless those people would relinquish the right of representation in the legislature, a right of an estimatable to them and formidable to tyrants only. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. And does New Hampshire have a quote from Thomas Paine to read us? Yes, I gotta repeat myself because it's a good quote. Okay. So to quote uh, Thomas Paine, we have it in our power to begin the world over again. The birthday of the new world is at hand. And Mr. Rutledge of South Carolina. Mr. Rutledge. A new world? America? Who will lead this new world? 
We are sovereign to our states. Are you suggesting the states yield power to another party instead of the king? Who makes decisions for this America? And for whose benefit are they really acting? For the benefit of all Americans. Mr. Lee from Virginia. We need to take the most effectual measures for forming a foreign alliance and to prepare a plan of confederation for the newly independent states. Independence is the only way to ensure foreign alliance, since no European monarchs would deal with us if we remain Britain's colonies. Mr. Sherman from Connecticut. We need to declare our reasoning for independence sufficiently to justify to other monarchies the legality of our endeavor. Not fear our revolution, but to embrace the freedom of our citizens in open trade and military assistance. Mr. Dickinson from Pennsylvania. Concerning military assistance. Sorry, I was mute. <laughs> so how will military assistance help us if we are but fighting each other? Now, I move that any vote in favor for independence be unanimous so that no colony be forced to choose sides in a civil war. And Delaware seconds the motion. I hereby reconvene Congress and call for a vote that any resolution for independence receive unanimity. All in favor say aye, against, nay. New Hampshire, this is your second vote. New Hampshire. <laughs> Massachusetts. Nay. Rhode Island. Yay. Connecticut. Nay. New York. Unfortunately, I must abstain for the aforementioned reasons. New Jersey. Uh, yay. Pennsylvania. Yay. Delaware. Vote in the affirmative. Maryland. Uh, vote to the negative. Virginia. Nay. North Carolina. Vote to the negative. South Carolina. Yay. And Georgia. Yay. The vote being six to six, with one abstention, it is a tie. In case of a tie, the chair casts the deciding vote, and with it, I realize that if we are going to fight Great Britain together, uh, we will most certainly either live or die together. If we split ourselves now, it will be not a war against Great Britain, but a civil war upon our land. And so the chair votes in favor of unanimity. Further, it is resolved that the committee be prepared, prepare a declaration, consist of five members. Mr. Adams, Mr. Franklin, Damn it. Mr. Sherman, Mr. Livingston, and Mr. Jefferson. It is further resolved that a committee be appointed to prepare the and, and digest the form of confederation that we will be entering into between the colonies. Each colony can have one member on said committee 
to write the Articles of Confederation. Those members will be John Dickinson from Pennsylvania, who will chair the committee. Samuel Adams from Massachusetts. Josiah Bartlett from New Hampshire. Button Gwinnett from Georgia. Joseph Hughes from North Carolina. Stephen Hopkins from Rhode Island. Robert Livingston from New York. Thomas McKean from Delaware. Thomas Nelson from Virginia. Edwin Rutledge from South Carolina. Roger Sherman from Connecticut. Thomas Stone from Maryland. And Francis Hopkins from New Jersey. It is resolved that the committee to prepare a plan of treaties be proposed to foreign powers, consisted of also of five members. Do the following gentlemen agree to serve on the committee? Mr. Dickinson? Yay! Mr. Franklin? Yay. Mr. Jefferson? A. Mr. Adams? Yeah. Mr. Harrison and Mr. Morris are yay. Mr. Jefferson, are you ready like with the document? In. Yes, sir. I would like to enter into the record a declaration by the representatives of the United States of America and General Congress assembled from the Declaration Committee. So received. Is there anyone that would like to offer amendments to Mr. Jefferson's declaration? Oh, oh, it seems like everyone wants to offer amendments. I have noted your 47 changes to Mr. Jefferson's declaration. The date being July 2nd, I hereby call the Congress into session. The Congress will now vote on Virginia's uh, resolution for independence. Sir, Congress should not declare independence without first securing a foreign alliance and finalizing the Articles of Confederation. Mr. Adams. Damn it, ma'am, we're at war. <laughs> Is the committee ready to present the Articles of Confederation? Mr. Dickinson. No. No, sir. It will be quite some time before our committee can submit the articles. Is the committee ready to present the model treaty? Mr. Adams. No, sir. We should be ready in a week or two. Hmm. Is the committee ready to present the Declaration of Independence? Mr. Jefferson. We have received 38 additional revisions and will be ready in a day or two. Mm. Mr. Rutledge. Sir, I have noticed that an offending passage remains in your Declaration of Independence. Can you read from the document? Which passage offends you, sir? I quote, He has waged cruel war against human nature itself violating its most sacred rights of life and liberty in the persons of a distant people who have never offended him, captivating and carrying them into slavery in another hemisphere or to incur miserable death in their transportation thither. End quote. Without its removal, South Carolina cannot support this document. Mr. Adams. If we remove this passage, we will be guilty of what we are, what we are ourselves rebelling against. <laughs> Mr. Franklin. <laughs> it is no use, John. The issue here is independence. We must compromise with those who we aspire to create a country. If we do not secure independence, what difference will the rest make? Mr. Rutledge. Remove the offending passage from your declaration. Uh, 
Will the committee members meet and discuss whether or not they want to do that? Just gather in the center of the room? Mr. Jefferson. Consider it so removed. The Congress will now vote on Virginia's revolution, uh, resolution for independence with unanimity needed for passage. I remind the Congress that a single nay vote will defeat the re resolution for independence. This may be the most important vote of our lives, gentlemen. How do you vote? New Hampshire. Yeah. Massachusetts. Yay. Rhode Island. Yay. Connecticut. Yay. New York. Uh, I must abstain. New Jersey. Yay. Pennsylvania. Yay. Delaware. Votes yay. And Maryland. Votes yay. Virginia. Yay. North Carolina. Votes yay. South Carolina. Yay. Georgia. Yay. The count being 12 to naught with one abstention, the resolution passes. These united colonies are free and independent states. All political ties with Great Britain are hereby severed. Mr. Adams. I'm out to believe that July 2nd, Independence Day, will be celebrated by succeeding generations as the Great Anniversary Festival. It ought to be commemorated as the Day of Deliverance by solemn acts of de devotion to God Almighty. It ought to be solemnized with pomp and parade with shoes, games, sports, guns, bells, bonfires, and illuminations from one end of this continent to the other from this time forward forevermore. The Congress will vote on adopting the Declaration of Independence two days hence, on July 4th. I propose for our mutual security protection that no man be allowed to sit in this Congress without attaching his name to it. Mr. Dickinson. <laughs> Though my animosity to Parliament remains strong, contract between king and subject cannot be broken by the actions of Parliament. I cannot sign that document. I hereby resign from this Congress and volunteer immediately for militia service. Let my words in our declaration of the causes and necessity of taking up arms foreshadow my patriotism on the field of battle. Gentlemen, we are about to brave the storm in a skiff made of paper. And how it should end, God only knows. Three cheers for Congress. Hip, hip, huzzah! Hooray! <laughs> hip, hip, hooray! Huzzah! Hip, hip, <laughs> huzzay! <Hooray! laughs> <laughs> Congress is hereby convened uh, two days hence for the declaration. Uh, we shall reconvene tonight at the City Tavern. Thank you, everyone for your attendance.